Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to our third lesson in Unit 3, Area Study 1, Microeconomics. Today, after talking about the very exciting uh, relative prices, uh, perfect indication, and types of efficiency in our last lesson, we're going to be moving on to the law of demand, which will then lead on to the law of supply, equilibriums, elasticity, etc. But I find that I like talking about this kind of stuff. It's a bit more practical, there's a bit more hands on stuff to go with it, there's a lot to talk about with it where it's relatively simple. Hopefully you remember it from last year, if you did economics last year. If not, it's gonna be new to you and we're gonna be doing it from the ground up regardless. But um, either way, it's kind of like a big part of this area of study. It's also going to be a decent chunk of the exam. It's kind of like, usually ends up being a question that's maybe 10 to 15% of the exam marks come from this little like area that we're going to be going into for the next four lessons. Let's dive right into it and look at the key knowledge that we're looking at. So we're gonna be looking at the law of demand and the demand curve, including movements along and shifts of the demand curve. And then we're gonna be looking at factors likely to affect demand and the position of the demand curve. And then that's it for today. So there's a few things in there. There's a decent chunk in there. There's a lot to unpack, but um, it shouldn't be too bad at all. So let's get straight into it. So the law of demand. Law of demand is all consumer focused. So it's all about you. It's all about how you would use your money and how price affects your behavior. I don't know why I'm pointing at me, because I'm not you, you are you. You are you. Um, so with the law of demand, as price increases, quantity demand decreases. This is logical. So like, if you want to buy a donut, donuts are on the mind, it's the 13th day in Melbourne of no, um, COVID cases to date this video to the 12th of November 2020. Um, as price increases, coin demand it decreases. So, like, if I want to buy donuts today, which I actually really do, I have a massive craving for donuts. Donuts are delicious. But if the price of donuts goes up, then my demand for them is going to go down. If I go to the shops and suddenly, like, if I just want to buy some delicious donuts and they're like five dollars a donut. Like, mm, I could use that $5 for so many other things. If it was $1 for a donut, I'm like, yeah, give me like, give me five. I'll use that whole $5 for five donuts and tell myself I'm gonna save them and then eat them all in one day. Um, the next point, as price decreases, it's proven, quantity demand increases significantly. Um, I just to give an example of this, to just stick on the baked goods train. Um, the local coals lately have started making fresh muffins, which they haven't been doing before. And they're surprisingly okay. Like they're not a bakery muffin, but they're pretty good. And they're normally $3 each, which is a bit much. Occasionally I might buy one to treat myself because I'm like, what, you deserve this. You work hard. Like put yourself to a $3 muffin. You can do it. But the other day, I think someone who really doesn't care about their job was using the price gun and they decreased in price to 60 cents. 20% of the original price. And I was there at the stall looking at these muffins. There was like so many of them in there, um, all different varieties. There was blueberry, there was apple cinnamon, there was chocolate, there was like a coffee one, I think. Um, but blueberry muffins and apple cinnamon muffins are the best form of muffin. Don't at me, like don't, I'm not gonna fight about it, but it's true, it's just a fact. But because they had decreased in price to 60 cents, all of a sudden, I wanted to demand a lot. Like I was thinking, I was like, do I just buy five because that's how much I normally spend on one muffin? Um, I was like, well, they're, they're reduced to sell because they're, they're a couple of days old. Like they're probably not as good. So I ended up buying two. That's still more than I would normally demand. And that's because the price decreased. So it's all about when price decreases, we demand a lot more because it's gonna maximize our utility. So this makes sense. When things get cheaper, you want them more. When they get more expensive, you don't logical um an example at the moment it's november when i'm recording this but mcdonald's is doing their like 30 days of deals if you have the mcdonald's app you're probably buying things that are cheap based solely on that and as a great example of the law of demand as things get cheaper you demand more of them one dollar frozen cokes amazing in summer hot weather um delightful frozen cokes used to be like four or five dollars people buy a lot more of them now they're a dollar they don't cost mcdonald's that much to make a dollar they cost them like 10 cents to make one so um, they realized lowering the price, they could do a lot more volume, it benefited them overall. So 
whenever we do demand, we end up getting these demand curve drawings. Um, it's really, really important to label them fully. You are going to have to draw a demand supply curve on the end of your exam. We're going to look at them individually and the key parts of them. So usually you're going to get marks for some of the following things. So you're going to get marks for labeling the y-axis, which is price, um, the x-axis, which is quantity. In this case, it's quantity demanded, but it's just a demand curve. Uh, you're going to get the demand line, which slopes downwards. My dumb way of remembering this is that demand starts with the letter D. D means down. Demand goes down. Um, and then a title, which is usually market for whatever, demand for whatever. Um, just talking about muffins, demand for muffins, market for muffins. Um, and this is like, if you know the definition, you'll know how to draw the line. Because you can see here, as price goes down, the quantity demanded is increasing overall. Price goes up, it does the opposite. Um, and that's going to lead into a little bit of what we'll talk about next. When the selling price increases, the quantity demand decreases, and we call that a contraction of demand. If we set a point somewhere along here, so if we go across and say this point, and we call that Q1, and we call this P1, if we increase the price, so if price goes up, we get to P2 up here. And Q2, you can see that as price increased, quantity demand decreased along this line. And we call that a contraction of demand. And that is very, very important. You have to use that terminology, otherwise BCAR is not going to give you the marks. Uh, then if we go to the opposite, so if we get rid of some of these lines and we draw in opposite ones, so if we get rid of those, um, then go in the other direction. So if price decreases, you'll see the quantity demanded increases, and we call that an expansion of demand. So as price is lowered, you start demanding a larger quantity, and that's called an expansion of demand. You can't say um, demand increases, although that's correct. You need to use terminology. You literally have to use this terminology in Saxon exams, or you probably won't get the full mark. So very, very, very important there. Then after this, we are getting into situations where um, when non-price factors cause increases or decreases in overall demand without the price changing. And this leads to a whole new demand line being created, and this is referred to as a shift of the demand curve. And so this is really important. What we're talking about in the last slide is just when the selling price of a good or service changes. A shift occurs when anything other than price changes. So non-price factors. And this can be favorable or unfavorable. So just to kind of like, See what I'm talking about here? So like if we chose a price here, when there is a shift, it's just saying that at the same price, so we call this P1, there is more being demanded. And that's a favorable shift. Or if we did the opposite, it would be at the same price, less is being demanded overall. And so favorable is always to the right and unfavorable is always to the left. So if we drew in an unfavorable shift as well, so we'll get a similar color. Uh, and drew that in over here. So if the line ends up over here and we get D3, that's unfavorable. And you can see much less is being demanded at that point. And so what kind of factors can make someone want more or less of something at the same price? Well, we were using the example of frozen Coke before. What would make you want a frozen Coke more despite the price being the same at $1? How about hot weather? If the um, seasons change, something you might want more or something. Seasonal changes could create more demand. What if you just have more money? What if you have gotten a pay rise? Are you going to start to buy more of your wants rather than your needs? So on this next slide, we're going to start to talk about some demand side factors. And it's the last thing we're going to talk about today. So some factors that can create a whole new demand curve. Are, and what we'll do is along with this, we will draw in a quick little one here. So if we go price, quantity, write the four words when you do it yourself, market, or blank, we've got our first demand curve. So then, change to disposable income. If your disposable income goes up for some reason, that is going to be favorable, you're gonna get a shift over to here. If it goes down, it's gonna be unfavorable and you're gonna get a um, demand curve that shifts to the left and there's gonna be less demanded at any given price. Successful advertising, that is gonna create more demand. Um, where it gets a little bit more complicated, a change in the price of a substitute item. So substitute items are all about goods that are interchangeable. 
Um, so the example we often use is Coke and Pepsi. Technically, they're both cola. You might have loyalty to one or the other, but we use them as an example for substitutes. If the price of Coke goes up, people there's going to be a favorable shift in demand for Pepsi because people are suddenly going to want more Pepsi because Coke's price is higher. And so because Coke's price has changed, it can cause a favorable or unfavorable shift for Pepsi. The change in the price of the complementary item. So a complementary item is items that go well together. So bread and butter, cereal and milk, um, bagels and cream cheese, underrated combination um, that we brought back from America at some point. But if a complementary item decreases in price, it will cause a favorable shift to the item that goes with it. So if bread goes down in price, there'll be a favorable shift for butter because people want it more, um, those kind of things. Whereas if there's an increase in the price of bread, anything that goes on bread will have an unfavorable shift because people won't want to buy bread. Therefore, they won't want to buy anything that goes with bread. Decreases to personal income tax will lead to favorable shifts in demand. Seasonal changes we already talked about before. Trends when something gets really popular, suddenly there's an increase in demand without the price having to change. And interest rates, um, big one for both demand and supply. Interest rates, like they're currently been decreasing when interest rates decrease, it's cheaper to get a loan. Therefore, you've got more access to money, which can increase demand. Um, when interest rates go up, it incentivizes people to save and also punishes them if they've got a loan, et cetera, because they're paying back more on their loan. And therefore, they're going to have less disposable income and less able to demand things overall. All right, so that's been the law of demand. Um, there's a lot to unpack there. Hopefully, you've been pausing this to take notes. If you have any questions about any of these things, feel free to shoot me an email. My email is listed right below. Um, but yeah, tomorrow, next time, I don't know when this will be for you. For me, it's probably just going to be later today. We're going to talk about the law of supply. Um, as our next lesson, it will be the same structure, but all about supply and it'll all be business focused. So I hope this has helped you. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.